Welcome to the Crypto Buzz by Calkine TV. The bear market has swooped again over the last week, but crypto enthusiasts are feeling positive as the global crypto market cap made its way back up to 1.03 trillion US dollars. And today both Bitcoin and Ethereum are up, but are still at their support levels. Bitcoin's market cap is close to $388 billion with 37.86% market dominance and the stable coins are having close to $154 billion market cap with a 14% size piece of the pie. Now in this episode we're going to discuss crypto transactions, NFT licenses and Nike's phenomenal revenue from their recent NFT collectibles sale. So please keep watching till the end. The narrative is changing around whether Bitcoin is a hedge against inflation, with its recent correlation to the equity markets no longer acting like a form of digital gold. Will the crypto market be able to remain independent and decouple from the traditional markets as more institutional investment pours into its layer two use cases? Well, the price of Bitcoin is currently sitting at close to $20,195, being up about 2.5% in the last 24 hours. During the Asian mid-session, this data was correct, according to CoinGecko. Bitcoin is down, however, 14.6% over the last 30 days, and over the last 12 months, it is also down 58.7%. Analysts from Waste Ratings are looking for Bitcoin to close above about $20,800 before it moves up further towards $21,800. And if it can't maintain those levels above $20,000, it could head south, searching for support levels around $19,300 and $18,900 or lower. Interesting to note though, while we're looking at the technical side of Bitcoin's price movement, Bitcoin's currently under its 200 week moving average. Historically, this has only occurred a handful of times, quite literally, during the lows twice of the 2015 bear market and the dip of the 2018-2019 bear market as well as the COVID slump of 2020 and now finally the current bear market swoop that we are experiencing. And according to data presented by Galaxy Digital, these have proved to be favourable buy opportunities. Opportunities. But on that note, I'll just add that this report is not financial advice, but only information from charts and data used when investigating into digital assets prices. So it's important that you do your own research when thinking of investing in the highly volatile crypto sector. Couldn't iterate that more. Now onto Ethereum. Ethereum's token Ether is priced at $1,534.46. They're up about 5.9% in the last 24 hours. And over the last 30 days, it's down about 9.6%. Over the last 12 months, though, it's down 52.5%, according to data from CoinGecko. Now, it could be said that the Fed Chair Jerome Powell's quantitative tightening speech at Jackson Hole last Friday, despite economic factors deteriorating, is impacting the risk-averse investors. The Fed changed their view on inflation towards the end of 2021 when they realised supply chain issues, geopolitical factors and pandemic stimulus that was the initial cause of the transitory inflation was to be exacerbated by the rising CPI readings due to the wages not being able to keep up with the rising costs of living. The phrase transitory inflation only broke out into the sphere of the broader public in 2021 when it was being used to describe the economy outside of the conversations between the economic figureheads. So reported by Forbes, this may be of interest to you. The American Institute of Economic Research defines transitory inflation as a rate of inflation that does not remain high permanently. In some cases, the temporary high inflation rate is followed by a period of lower inflation. But as we've seen of late, that is definitely not what we're experiencing. We're seeing inflation rise higher and higher uh, with the data that's been presented over the last few months. But stop the press because this is where crypto can offer a solution with its cheaper, faster peer-to-peer -peer payment system. Now, with the help from Singaporean exchange Crypto.com, more Australian fuel and OTR or on-the-run convenience stores will accept crypto payments. And this means consumers will gain in Australia from using their crypto for purchases from over 440 Australian retailers. Peregrine Corp, who is the major owner of close to 174 petrol stations and convenience stores, has opted in for Bitcoin payments. So users will need to select crypto.com as a payment method, which then generates a QR code that will enable transfer of payment. 
quite big news for the Australians. Now, the price of Crypto.com's CRO Crow token is at close to 0 0.123. Uh, dollars being up about 4.6% in the last 24 hours and over the last 30 days it is down 10.5% and over the last 12 months it's also down about 23%. That's data from CoinGecko. Now, adding to this news, it seems the wider general public are adopting an attitude of gratitude for the scaling solutions crypto can provide for transactions. In a recent report researched by Pure Profile, Data Mesh and Crypto.com, it was found that one third of Australian businesses will be ready for crypto payments within 12 months. The report aptly named Crypto for the Real World, revolutionising everyday purchases using cryptocurrency, provided some pivotal results with data presented showing more than 2,000 consumers and 500 businesses are ready to adopt transacting in crypto. Australians and those worldwide are growing accustomed to accepting transacting in crypto as easily as they do now with fiat. And on that note, we'll take a short break, but do stay with us because after the break, we'll take a closer look at NFTs as promised and what you're actually buying when you buy one. Build better relationships, get connected, heard and noticed. We always believe in getting you the best. Kalkine Media's growing platform, Kalkine TV, helps you connect to an inquisitive audience from across the globe. Interact in a trusted environment. Showcase your brand on Kalkine TV in a seamless and effective manner. We connect and curate content as per your business needs. So why wait? Write to us at guestteam at kalkine.com.au. Welcome back after the break. So, have you purchased an NFT yet? Maybe you've earned an airdrop from a protocol who has launched a new NFT series. Do let us know in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. NFTs are a broad area of discussion with it being one of the bridges between the world of computer science and the general public of consumers. NFTs ability to raise money from philanthropic causes through digital art sales and its many use cases in e-commerce and the entertainment industry are attracting a lot of attention outside of blockchain gaming. Roblox revenue might be down but Nike just made $185 million from a sale of NFT collectibles. Nike entered the metaverse with Nikeland, a joint venture with Roblox. And after Nike's acquisition of RTFKT, a creator-led AR and blockchain NFT entity, they began producing their own NFTs and it's proved extremely lucrative, churning out over $1 billion on the secondary market. Now, one of the grey areas, however, in NFT ownership is licensing and what the buyer is actually owning when they make the purchase. In the past, some of the biggest issuers of NFT collectibles could have been a little contentious in what they were relaying to their purchasers. Yuga Labs, for example, one of the creators of MeBits and CryptoPunks, these are some of the pioneers in NFT collectibles, have come across as misleading relating to intellectual property rights of the NFT content sold. Mike Novogratz's Galaxy Digital, who operates in crypto and traditional finance trading, asset management, principal investments, investment banking and crypto mining, you may have heard of them, have recently conducted a survey of NFT licenses. And what they found is quite interesting. I'll share that with you now. Moonbirds is another popular and lucrative NFT collection and they reportedly changed their license after correcting their website from providing information that turned out to be incorrect. And they were stating that clients were owning the IP of NFTs purchased. The NFT license of that particular Moonbird series has now been changed to Creative Commons. And according to creativecommons.org's website, the public domain dedication through listing on Creative Commons enables holders of copyright to place works as far as legally possible for free use worldwide. So just to clarify for you, NFTs and digital assets are in actuality lines of code on a blockchain. Ethereum's use cases exceed Bitcoin's due to its ability to use smart contracts, which provide for NFTs. Non-fungible tokens are governed by the ERC-721, like a Bored Ape Yacht Club NFT token. But a fungible token on the Ethereum blockchain, like Chainlink's link or synthetic. SNX is governed by the ERC-20 standard. 
And these ERC20 tokens are provided with a set of parameters that they need to comply with in order to remain fungible. So the price of Chainlink's token link is $6.64 at present, being up about 4.6% in the last 24 hours. And over the last 30 days, it is down 15%. And over the last 12 months, it's also down 74.3%, according to CoinGecko. And Synthetics, I'll just add there, their SNX token has been up quite a lot today. At the time of writing this report, it was up 9.5%, sitting at about $3.37. And over the last 30 days, it was down 7.4%. And over the last 12 months, it was down 71.1%, according to data from CoinGecko. So there's always quite a lot of information to pack into this show, which covers the week in crypto. And hopefully you found it informative. But as we wind up the show, it's important to note that August did see a number of major crypto hacks with wallets linked, especially to the Solana coins and Nomad, a blockchain bridge functionality offering users inter blockchain connectivity. These losses came close to about $200 million. This year, however, there has been close to $1 billion stolen from crypto protocols through hacks. And early in the year, Vitalik Buterin, the co-founder of Ethereum, did warn crypto enthusiasts that he saw many opportunities for exploits on the development of IBC or inter-blockchain connectivity functions at present, which means that functionality still could do with a lot of work. So just keep that in mind when you're thinking of using any crypto protocols out there. Thanks for watching this episode of Crypto Buzz. Please do keep watching Calkine Media for more live expert talks and market insights. Until the next episode, may the hodling continue. This is Sage signing off.